About 22 years ago, I stumbled upon a book in the library of the town where I grew up. I don't remember the title of the book anymore, but I remembered what the book was about. It was about the evolution of science, particularly how chemistry evolved from the practice of certain men known as the alchemists. These men were driven by certain objectives. They wanted to achieve some purpose and they went into the art of discovery. What were these men after? What were they pursuing at that time? These were the three things the alchemists were after. The first is to be able to discover what they call the philosopher's stone, an unknown substance known as the trinkshaw or powder, something that is believed you can use to transform base metals like iron or copper to something like gold to get more money. The second thing they were after is the transmutation of metals. How can they convert metal of lower quality or lower value to metals that are very valuable in their time like gold. The last thing the alchemist we are pursuing is to be able to discover the medium to cure every form of disease. A liquid or a substance you will take and not die. The elixir of life. This was their pursuit, and they went about this vigorously. You see, the practice of alchemy is gone, but the desire of man to get the elixir of life is still there. Daily men still go about their business of discovery, of experimentation, to be able to discover something you and I will take and live long or possibly live forever. It is an ongoing endeavor. Tell me, what is that thing? that have unmasked kings who played God? What is that thing that when it calls, the one he called becomes cold and lifeless, and those that are around that person become sorrowful and cry death? And that is what we are talking about today. We want to speak about that because it is a reality of life. Thousands of years ago, in the age of the patriarch, a man known as Job asked a question, a question that is in the hearts of millions today. If a man dies, shall he live again? Have you ever given a thought to dying? Have you considered the fact that you will die one day? Someday, you don't know. But why is it that death is pervasive? Death is real like hunger. Yet there is something in us that is afraid of death. There is something in us that is unwilling to yield to death. Why do people want to live forever? The answer is simple. Because there is something the creator of man has grafted into the soul of man. It is in your subconscious. It is that thing that creates the longing to live forever. It is that thing that inspires the experimentation of men to look for the elixir of life, something they will take and not die. Something that will cure all diseases and keep them alive to see generations upon generation. It is called eternity. Solomon said this in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He said, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to the end. Since death is coming for you and it's coming for me, it is important for us to discuss it, to understand it while we live. So to understand death, we must be able to ask ourselves, what is the cause of death? Since God has created eternity in our hearts, why death in the first place? Now that we have death, we must also be able to answer the question, what is the cure for death? Is death final? These are the questions we must ask ourselves. And when we look for solution, there is no better place to go. There is no better person to go or the one who created life. God who created us. And the Bible tells us the origin of death. God gave a command in the garden after his creation that you must not eat of this tree. The day you eat of it, you will die. That is the first mention of death. But that did not introduce death. The concept of death was there, but the reality of death came because of disobedience. The disobedience of man. To do that which God asked man not to do. That became the origin of death. Man subscribed to the lies of the devil and man has to suffer the consequence of his action. Death was introduced. But you see, the sad thing about death is not that death is the end of life. 
The sad thing about death is that death is the beginning of a life where we reap the consequences of all our choices and actions when we are alive. That is the scary thing about death. Come to think of it, if we die and go to an infinite nothing, what stops you from living the kind of life you want to live? Because you die and you go to an infinite nothing. You are completely annihilated. There's no consequences for your action. What stops you from living the way you want to live? Then YOLO becomes the truth. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And I tell you, that is why you are scared of death. Because you know death is not just homecoming. Death is also judgment day. And beyond judgment, it is he who will judge you that really matters. We live in a society where people are able to buy a certain verdict. But we know that when we die, our money cannot help us. Our influence cannot help us. And the one who is going to judge us is just, is incorruptible. He dwells in unapproachable light. He is the definition of purity and holiness. He has an HD footage of all of our choices and actions. There is no masquerading. There is no pretending. God sees you as you are, knows what you have done, and is the one that will judge you. And I tell you, that is why we are so scared of death. Because we know it is judgment day. We know we will give account. We don't like to be accountable here. We know we cannot escape that moment of accountability. But you see, beyond God being a just God, God is also a merciful Father, gracious in all his ways. And that is why God is in his own will, in his own love, gave us the cure of death, the antidote to death, the elixir of life. In the person of Jesus, God incarnate, he came to earth to live so as to teach us how to live. And he went up to Gogota, to the cross, to die so that you and I will not die, so that death cannot reign over us. Why is this important? If you accept Jesus, death has no power over you. Yet, death Death can have influence over this physical body, but death has no power over your mind. Death has no power over your soul. Death is defeated in Christ Jesus. God gave the cure in the person of Christ Jesus. So yes, death is real. Yes, death is coming for you. You can say, God forbid, from now to tomorrow. But when death comes, you are going. I can wish it away, but when it comes, I am going. It does not matter what you have done. It does not matter how intelligent you are. When death comes, these do not matter. The beautiful thing is there is an elixir. But the elixir of life is not in the substance, but in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do you get access to the salvation that Christ brings? The salvation from the yoke, the bondage of sin. For sin brings death. Sin brought death to this world. And sin, the sin you are sinning right now will give you death also. The Bible tells us for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that is why Christ came to take care of the root cause of death, which is sin. He came to die for your sins. The Bible also tells us in the book of Romans that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is death hanging on your neck because of sin. But the good news is that Christ came and died on the cross for that sin so that you have access to the life he gives. How do you get access to this life? Remember what I told you earlier? A day is coming when our choices and our actions will be judged. How do you get access to this life that Christ brings? The first thing you need to do is to believe in Jesus. It's a choice. A choice to believe. The beautiful thing about this world is that God has left a lot of evidence in this world that believing in him is a logical thing to do. And he has also taken some things out of this world that you need him to be able to live through life. You cannot understand everything. But you have enough facts to believe in Jesus. There is a lot of evidence that shows that truly Christ walked on earth. He died on the cross for the remaining mission of sins. You need to believe in Jesus. For the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God that he that must come to him must first of all believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It starts from believing. The second step is something we don't like hearing about, but I won't stop talking about it. It is repentance. Repentance is a U-turn. It's a change of heart that leads to a change of life. We don't want to repent from our sins because it fits 
us. We don't want to repent from our sins because it feeds our pride. But you see, the Bible tells us, shall we continue in sin that the grace of God be abound? Paul said, God forbid, we must repent. There is something you need to repent from. Check your life. That you turn. I'm not going to do this anymore. This sin took my Savior to the cross. I don't want to do this anymore. That is repentance. The third step is confession of your faith in Jesus. It's like the pledge of allegiance. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans 10 verse 10 that with the heart a man believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In the book of Acts chapter 8, when Philip preached to the Ethiopian, you know, when you read from verse 35, the man said, here is water, what prevents me from being baptized? Philip asked him, if you believe, you may. And the man confessed that he believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Will you say that from your mouth today? Will you really mean that? in your hearts today because that is what you need as a step to have access to the one who conquered death and conquered it all. The fourth step is for you to be baptized. Baptizing is the avenue where your sins are washed away. It's a physical exercise with deep spiritual implication because Christ said in the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 16, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. I don't care what people think and what people say. The short roots and the short method people have invented. What I'm concerned about is God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Christ said, if you believe and you are baptized, you will get salvation. Peter record this in the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 38. Peter also record this in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21. There is an antitype which now saves you, namely baptism. It is not the removal of the feet of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. You cannot legislate this away. You cannot edit the Bible. Apostle Paul was told by Ananias in Acts 22 verse 16, what are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins today. Baptism is a medium through which God washes away sin. The sin that was paid for by Christ Jesus on the cross of Calvary. This is the process to access the elixir of life. This is what puts you into the body of Christ, his church. This is what translates you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. I wish there is another way. I would have shared it with you. There is no other way to unmask death. There is no other way to prepare for death than the way of the cross. You have heard the gospel. Will you believe in Jesus? Will you confess your faith? Will you repent of your sins? Will you be baptized to be part of those who can enjoy the salvation that Christ brings, the victory over sin and over death? Will you be part of the people? Friends, the smartest thing to do while you are alive is to prepare for death. Amos the prophet said this in the book of Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. The life we are living now is nothing but a preparation for eternity. The question is, how well are you preparing? I cannot run away. You cannot run away. It is a fact, and I'm just re-echoing it. You are going to die someday. Come to think of it, what if someone comes to tell you that you are going to die tomorrow? That looks like a very bad news for many of us, isn't it? But that's the reality. And that is why in your heart and in the hearts of many, the question of Job is still very loud. If a man dies, will he live again? The Bible answers that in the affirmative. Yes! When a man dies, that's not the end. He will live again. This body will be a food to maggots. This body will decay. But the soul, the spirit given by God, the very essence of man lives on. But that life is a life of consequence. Consequence based on the choices and the actions that you have lived while you are alive. That is why you need to prepare for your death. Because if you are not prepared, you are going to reap either the benefit of your choices, choosing Jesus, choosing to live the life of decency, the life of holiness, the life of righteousness, the life of purity. You will reap the good reward of that life or you will reap the consequence of living the life of sin. And the Bible tells us that if you and I are not on the good book, the book of life, then we'll face the main death. What the Bible calls the second death in the book of Revelation that involves the gnashing of teeth, the real death that involves sorrow. Is that what you are preparing for? Truth is no one can be prepared for that. No one can be prepared for that. Beautiful thing is you don't have to go through the second death. The elixir of life and the person of Jesus is still here for you 
you and for me. He is accessible and do not delay. In Jerusalem, the Bible tells us that Jesus stood up and called out in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. John 7, 37 and 38. Christ is the elixir of life. Are you thirsty? Are you longing for life? Are you yearning for eternity? Go to Jesus now and drink. The call has been re-echoed to you today. As you are watching this, I ask you, what will your response be? You have heard God's words from his very heart to yours today. Wherever you are watching this from, I make this appeal to you. Will you be an ambassador of God by sharing this message to someone? Because death is coming for us all. No one is living here alive. Will you be an ambassador to use this message to inspire someone to prepare for the inevitable? As you do that, God will bless you. If this this message has struck a deep chord in your heart. You can just share your thoughts with us in the comment section. We'd like to hear from you because it encourages us to keep doing what God has called us to do. Before I see you again next week, please do where to take care of yourself. God bless you.